I don't know what it was. He's walking upright like a man. Sightings in and around Vermont. Bigfoot sightings across New England have been reported. Red glowing eyes, about seven feet tall. Red eyes, big old fangs, claws coming out through. Three inches long, you know, just sharp as they can be. There has been another UFO sighting flying over the Royal Botanic Gardens. There are 500 UFO sightings in the world every month. The truth is out there. I think we should just call this one Technical Difficulties. I think that's the name of the episode, Technical Difficulties. (laughs) Because I think it's an hour now into uh, our whole thing. Oh, yeah. Because, well... What happened was John decided to try a new recording setup that he never tried before. <laughs> and John's an idiot. <laughs> um, so, but there is actually a new recording setup this time. Uh, hopefully that catches some of the things that I personally didn't like. <laughs> yeah, we, we got smaller room. We've got hundreds of off-axis planes just, just everywhere. Maybe thousands, hundreds in, in individual pieces, thousands in planes. It's yeah, be good I, there's stuff. there's a couple. Let's see. Uh, right now, I've got pretty much the entirety of Beast Wars on display, so <laughs> that's a thing. Um, I've got some Power Rangers off to my side. Got myself a little uh, The Last Night Megatron that I'll probably be fiddling Ooh. with because he's fucking amazing. They looked great. I saw your picture. Oh, this dude is gorgeous, but the problem is the movie sucked. Well, that's because it was a Transformers movie. Yeah, I'm hoping that Bumblebee's good. Ho- Bumblebee's always good. Well, the, the Bumblebee movie actually looks good because it's the it was made by it's being made by the Kubo director. Yeah. My favorite so. figure that I and I don't have it, but I had it as a kid is I think it was called the Bumble Jumper. Bumble Jumper? That's um that's a yellow uh that's a yellow redeco of Cliff Jumper. Yes, it was if that's so the one good. you're talking about. It had actual rubber wheels. So kind of like uh, this is a a red bumble. Oh. This is red bumblebee. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but the one that you're talking about had uh, more sharp angles. But this is a red bumblebee. Hell I yeah. had him on my keychain for a while, um, but then I took a tumble while snowboarding and it snapped <laughs> the keychain part. <laughs> But I do like him. He was a fun boy. Yeah, he's awesome. As a, uh, as it would, as the uh, toys that made us documentary said, sweet boy, sweet sweet boy. So I have an actual question for you. You posted yeah. a picture, and it looked like you were in a school. Mm-hmm. What's that about? I saw something. Oh, I... You said you were talking about an acronym uh, that I assumed was an STD of some sort. Um, yeah, I was actually back at Marist. Oh, really? Yes, two days ago? Yeah. yeah I was, I, w- I went to Marist for those who don't know me personally, uh, for my undergrad. Um, and I have a degree in computer science, which given the increasingly, uh, insane text that I've been writing, you'd be surprised. <laughs> um, and I actually have a master's in something too. <laughs> I am a enigma. Um, but yeah, no, I was, uh, what happened was my department is trying to recruit people. Yeah. So we went to the, um, we went to, to Marist because it's close to where we work because we're trying to basically seed internships so we can actually like benefit. Okay, cool. So it, I, I talked about it and because people are going to always ask about game design development if they know that you know anything about it. Yeah. Um, half the questions I fielded were on game design, <laughs> despite the fact that I was there for supercomputers. So, <laughs> you know, I, I, I've just come to terms with it. Yeah. At this point, because that's just my life. <laughs> so the real question is, how well do supercomputers handle Red Dead? Uh, very poorly. <laughs> because most of them don't have any kind of uh, graphical output. Oh, yeah. That, that'll yeah. do it. They do have they do have graphics cards, uh, particularly the ones that I work on, because yeah. they're used as accelerators. But uh-huh. um, they, they don't have graphic outputs. There's no HDMI ports on those. <laughs> so. 
Also, um, Red Dead is a console exclusive, so you know. Is it? Yeah, it's uh, PS4 or Xbox One. Oh man, I I'm pretty torn because Fallout 76 is coming out. And I only have enough free time to play one of the two in my head. At least how I could probably put in maybe a couple hours a week playing. And it, and it might lean towards Vault 76 only because there may be some Virginia-based cryptids. They're explicitly Virginia-based cryptids. Yeah, so I, I'm thinking I might hold out for that. Yeah, spoiler alert, I may be doing one. No, right on. But... Uh, that's not today's episode now, is it? No. No, it's not. You know why? Because today because did it. is an all-American Thanksgiving special. That's the true. The most Thanksgiving special you will ever hear. I in no way forgot about Thanksgiving. So I, I think you did. No. I definitely remember telling you about it. And then you were like, oh, really? Yeah, no, th- this this one is going to take place exclusively in uh, pre-colonial America, and it's fantastic. Oh. But before we get too far, I would like to say welcome to Last Cryptid on the Left, the world's first cooking competition where each mystery ingredient basket contains one item that is known to be poisonous. Watch till the end, because each contestant will be forced to eat the other's food, and whoever succumbs to the sweet release of death first will be used as chum in our large river creature trap baskets, and they will have the privilege, the honor, of getting a nameplate displayed on our detritus buckets for the next quarter. I'm Brandon. (laughs) I'm John. (laughs) They're getting increasingly unhinged, I feel like. Yeah, yeah, it was Um, that kind of week. Yeah, they're they're definitely getting a little bit farther uh, down the path of serial killer? <laughs> a little bit? I mean, you you put way more effort into planning out what your uh uh what your 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 joke title for Cryptopedia is. Um and I'm I'm starting to get concerned, Brandon. <laughs> I gotta express a little bit of concern. The the first half of my week was intros and commercial ideas, and I went a little bit crazy. God damn it! it I, I the first half of my week was trying to find a good source. <laughs> that's that's about par for the course. That's yeah. pretty par. I went through several different cryptids, and I did look for a pre-colonial cryptid. And there was absolutely nothing that was you could get a full episode out of. I'll bet that. I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll totally believe that. I'll take that bet. Yeah, it's 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 a struggle. The struggle is real. I and... mean, most of them most of them uh, boil down to a devil did it at that time period. Yeah, <laughs> like almost all of them are. Yeah, it's probably just a demon. Yep, devil did it. Took the sheep's. And before we get too far. I do have a few orders of business. The first is that I was perusing Netflix in my free time yesterday, and they have a new documentary called The Tigers of Scotland. So I watched that whole thing. Did you see it? I saw the, I saw the, um... Like the tile show up? I saw the tile. I didn't get a chance to watch it yet. It looks adorable. It's, it's fantastic. It's pretty cute. And it is about the wildcats, specifically the wildcats of Scotland, which is an endangered species. Apparently there are fewer than 100 left alive. But I watched the whole thing because it threw me back to our fairy episode. I I literally, when I saw it, I was like, oh, like the Kate Sith. Yeah, exactly. So I watched it because I wanted to see if they, they, they commented on it. And my first complaint is that the narrator does say hyperbole instead of hyperbole yeah that's rough rough. that's rough yeah and he is a legitimate scotsman and they do have a several minute portion specifically on the kate sith and i was very excited and i learned that the proper pronunciation is the cat she 
and I would like to mm. thank Real Scotsman and narrator of the documentary, Ian Glenn, for properly pronouncing it. And I'd like to welcome him as an unofficial intern in our corrections department. So, good uh, on him. Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, and, I don't know how the higher-ups will feel about that. They will, we'll, we'll see. I, I, they don't know about it yet. I didn't mention it. And there was a second correction that came out of that because they did have an actual scientist, not just a guy with a beard that read something on the internet. And they mentioned the hybrid theory about the Kellis cat that I thought that made sense. And he said that the Kellis cat, in his opinion, rather than being a hybrid of domestic and wild cat, is more likely a melanistic wild cat based on the bones that he had in his lab that they were reviewing. And melanistic means that it has darker fur and that would also go for the white patch on its chest. So that, I'll trust him over some stuff I read online. So it's basically like the inverse of alb albinism, albinoism. Sort of, yeah. And it's apparently among this very rare species to begin with an incredibly rare trait which feeds back into people seeing one and going holy cow what the heck is this yeah i gotcha yeah so it was fun it was adorable and i highly recommend it if anyone likes watching big scottish cats do cute stuff they are also they're apparently very rare because there are several minutes of them filming a mouse uh so so i think they're padding for time because they had a hard time finding some God damn it. Yep, yep. <laughs> I also learned the easiest way to tell the difference between a domestic cat gone feral, which is one that you do have to shoot and kill, and mm -hmm. not killing the endangered species of the wild cat, which may look similar, is okay. shake a bag of cat food. The wild cats don't give a shit. The domestic cats that went feral or hybrids, they, they just start yelling at you, asking for food. <laughs> <laughs> that that just sounds like cats yeah that's, that's just that's the cats. most that's one of those things that i would have been able to guess yeah <laughs> they were talking about how difficult it could be to tell the difference especially in ones with stripes and i in my head was going through how to do it and they just start shaking bags of food but oh oh yeah it's that's that's uh that's easier than what i thought <sighs> if if we shook a bag of food for my cat for Jiro, he'd murder you for it. <laughs> like, if you keep it away from him, he will murder you. I can't touch things that sound like food packages. Oh, no, that's fair. That That's my life. Yeah, they're, if they're you, demons. Cats are nightmares. Oh, yeah. Our monster this week has okay. no original discovery date, but was popular in the 1800s, and its first image was drawn in 1713 it resides in japan and it resembles a teenage mutant hero turtle do you have a guess on what it may be well it's either the kappa or something else that's related to the kappa it's the kappa you guessed it all right the all-american thanksgiving kappa uh wait wait that's I mean, unless you consider the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles to be all American, and then they were actually Kappa or something like that. Oh, also, you picked a really, um, you picked a fun episode in terms of pronunciations. Oh, I hope you're ready. Yeah, it's uh, <laughs> it's gonna be a good one. I just shot you over the shareable link so you could view okay. my notes. All right, and we'll one see. Second. Say there is an atypically large number of pictures. In this, all right, because is there is there a lot of farting? There's a lot of farting. There's a lot of okay. everything. There's a lot of just weird stuff. But I'm, uh, I'm trying to permission. reformat how I structure things to be more suitable for the Hodag patrons. Um, mm, okay. Yeah. So so they'll be getting more pictures and uh, just minor uh, reformatting. The mothers of distension. Yeah. So it's it's like Frank Ca <laughs> Frank Zappa and the Mothers of Invention, but it's Frank Kappa and the Mothers of Distension. <laughs> I feel gross. I feel gross. You've done a gross thing to me. Oh, it is. Yeah, yeah. It was. It was. 
I was having a hard time, and then I thought about that, and it's, it was too perfect to pass up. So our creature this week is a monster from Japanese folklore known as yokai. For our listeners, yokai is a blanket term used for unknown creatures, spirits, or demons possessing supernatural powers, sometimes appearing as small animal-like creatures and sometimes appearing as humanoid. The specific yokai we're addressing will be the kappa. And I'd like to add that uh, yokai are just, they're fantastic. They're super interesting. I would expect a significant number of yokai-based episodes. No, that's that's definitely within reason. Um, my favorite, uh, my favorite interpretation of a kappa, a kappa. Yeah. Um. Wow. I I totally mangled that. Um. Would be the kappa from uh, Arakawa Under the Bridge. Oh, what's that? Yeah, I just sent you it. It's pretty great. It's definitely not a man in a kappa suit. <laughs> <laughs> no, it is definitely not that. Yeah, no, there's no way. There's no way that it could be that. <laughs> it, couldn't, it couldn't be anything except that. So Japan has one of the oldest histories out there and has a population of over 128 million. So it's no surprise that there are many interesting legends out there. Like a lot of them. Like a lot, a lot. Like a lot, a lot, a lot. My favorite yokai, yeah. by the way, as a side note, is the smiling woman. Oh, yeah, yeah, she's yeah. a good one. Yeah, she's super cool. Or is she technically a yure? It's possible. I, I think she's technically a yure, which is like a, a type of vengeful spirit. Yeah, yeah, no, that's true. That's true. The kappa, translating literally to river child, is a river monster out of Japanese folklore. In its appearance, the kappa is about the size of a small child. It's green, covered in scales, has a turtle-like shell on its back. Its feet are webbed, and its hands have claws. It also has a wide mouth and hair that looks like an old-fashioned friar. Its head is cupped and holds fluid, which is said to hold all of its power. Sometimes that fluid is just also a bubble that sits on top of its head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, credit to what they're credit to the kappa, though. They're pull they're rocking that uh friar hairstyle. Oh yeah. Oh they're, yeah. They're pulling it off, I guess. I mean, it's a frog man, so you know. Yeah. Rocking the horseshoe as a frog. God damn. <laughs> For its demeanor, the Kappa can range from being fairly mischievous, challenging travelers to sumo, in which case it is said that you can trick them by bowing beforehand, in which case they will bow in return and spill the fluid from their head. Because you know, Kappa are chivalrous. They're also stupid. Yeah. They're like dumb and polite. Like, <laughs> they're they're dumb polite. Yeah. Like I mean for real. <laughs> I, I know I know a lot about Kappa. This yeah. is one of those this is probably of all of the monsters you pick, this is probably the one I know the most about by myself. Cool. Right on. Um but they are extremely dumb in that regard <laughs> like it's the one thing you've got one thing that you're you can't do yeah <laughs> it's like uh what's his name from the first episode the guy who uh had a problem with the sand and all that stuff all oh, he had to yeah. do is not tell anyone the red caps guy yeah you've got one weakness all you have to do is not tell anyone about your one weakness yeah it, the cap are just the same yeah oh yeah they could also be fairly evil, drowning children and stealing their souls from their butts. A shiri kodama, or hardened ball within the anus, which is said to contain the soul. I mean, that's where my soul resides, so that make, that tracks for me. Yeah, oh yeah, that's where like, mine resides like, too. <laughs> I get it. it, it totally makes sense, you know. Oh yeah. Oh, this is a good picture. I, I am a big fan of that. There's a bunch of very old, very good, good pictures. If there you... are phenomenal pictures of the Kappa. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. They're great. They are great. If you wanted to capture a Kappa, the best way is to set a trap. In the image below, you can see a brave soul who has presented his buttock to this river demon. He has fastened a bow to a structure made of bamboo and is prepared to shoot it should it approach to steal his butt. I would like to uh, add that this... Uh... Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> so let me describe this to the people who can't see this. Um, there are two bamboo shoots. There is one bow that is affixed to said bamboo shoots. A man, pants, none, uh, is standing in the river. You may be able to see his penis. Um, the bow has been drawn, and a kappa is like, mm, I'm going to get that butt. Yeah. I'm going to get that butt. Another man, to the side, he likes to watch. <laughs> My thought is he might have a string or something. So that as the I kappa think... approaches, he pulls the string and it shoots the arrow into the kappa. No, 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 man. <laughs> he's got he he's into it. That man that man on the side is into it. He's I just can see watching. it in his face. Oh man, if anyone's interested in this, by the way, it is available to all of our Hodag level patrons at two dollars a month. Uh, as well as all of our write ups. That was a shameless plug. Oh, I have none. Shame, I don't have any. I mean, not that that guy in the picture doesn't have any shame. <laughs> oh, no, he's just straight creeping. Yeah. If you were looking to protect you and your family from this creature, it is said that writing the names of your loved ones on the cucumbers and throwing them into a river prior to swimming, that the kappa would eat the cucumbers rather than your family or friends. However... There are others who say that this will attract the Kappa, and it appears that this is a regional difference in Japan, whether you are pro or anti cucumbers. That's true. I mean, yeah. like, I have a question for you, though. Yeah. Um, would the people who write their name say that writing your name of your loved one on a cucumber, uh huh, um, are they pro cucumber or are they anti cucumber? Because they're they're just throwing away a perfectly good cucumber. Are the people who say that it will get you killed the ones who are pro cucumber because they're like, no, these are our cucumbers. <laughs> That's Stop. A different way of looking at it. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. like, maybe maybe Kappa really do like cucumbers, but 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 one guy was like, stop eating all my damn cucumbers. <laughs> stop. Their cucumbers are fine. I don't know why they're so into them. They're Listen. I know people that eat just straight salted cucumber. They'll just cut it into slices, put a little salt and eat it. I'm like they they're fine as an addition to something else that's already good. But you get, you get out of here. You can't just eat straight cucumbers. I mean, once they're pickled, they're great. Once well, yeah, that's true. Pickled cucumbers like, are fantastic. Arguably, pickled cucumbers are the best form of pickling. Yeah. Oh yeah, arguably. I found a fermented uh, pickle recipe that sounds fantastic and I want to try it out. That could be great or terrible. There, I know. There's there's yeah. no in between on that one. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I gotta say. Yeah. Uh, in fact, the Kappa's love of cucumber is so well known that cucumber sushi is known as Kapamaki. Hmm. And uh, I, I'd actually like to try some. I haven't uh, haven't had any, but it sounds it sounds pretty good. Yeah, I've never had Kappa Monkey. I imagine it's similar to a California roll, but different. Yeah, probably. Yeah. As far as modern belief in these creatures, near certain bodies of water, signs warning of Kappa may be found. However, it is my opinion that these are intended as warnings for children placed near possibly dangerous or dirty water and not necessarily a firm belief that these creatures roam the area. Yeah, I mean, it makes a lot of sense because a kid's yeah. going to latch on to a kappa being a nuisance more than um, more than they're going to latch on to, you know, uh, there's pollutants in that water. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Or, oh, you're going to get electrocuted to death. Yeah. Oh, <clears throat> this reminds me. It's been a very long time since I heard about it, so I'm going to be more general. But there mm -hmm. was a committee put together in the United States to they wanted to hollow out a mountain and just store a bunch of uh radioactive waste in there from nuclear mm -hmm. runoff and their concern was we need to put together something that will outlast the it's like it'll that will stand for thousands of years so that people do not enter it and mm -hmm. among 
the ideas that were um, arisen outside of erecting large stone uh, or in steel pillars with um, iconography that, that, w- that would spread the idea was to create a rumor about monsters roaming the area and to actually like <laughs> bring in like to create an entire community of people whose only job was to live in the area and spread that to keep people away. And I thought that was pretty interesting. I love that. Yeah. But the problem with that is if you did that, it would definitely, definitely backfire because people are fucking stupid. Oh yeah. I forget. I forget the episode, but it was an episode of 99% Invisible with Roman Mars, the man with the most beautiful voice. Ah. It's my, my, my voice is <laughs> much better than Roman Mars. That's, it's almost too sultry. It, it, it is. Yeah. <laughs> I think I have a great speaking voice. Oh, you do. You that do. was my Roman Mars impression, by the way. That I was having a hard time telling you two apart. I know, right? Yeah. It's very good. Yeah. And for the following, I was unable to find at least English sources that went in depth, but it tickled my fancy. There were a lot of Japanese sources, but I don't trust Google Translate enough to, <laughs> to read that and then put it uh, into an episode. That's fair. That's yeah. the reason. Oh, yeah. So Kappa are well known for their farts. In fact, one 1866 illustration shows that a Kappa's fart is strong enough to blow fishermen away. It is apparently so common a thing that there is a turn of phrase, Kappa no hai, or sorry, Kappa no hai, which is analogous to saying, easy as pie, piece of cake, no problem, because Kappas just fart that much. In fact, farting has been a form of entertainment for centuries, during yeah, the bad. Edo period, farting entertainers were called hepiri otoko. The image below shows a man who is farting, and his fart is strong enough that it could thwart a kappa. And is an ad for a modern fartist or flatulist in Japan. Um, so, before that happens, yeah. before we move on, I'm going to describe this fart. Um, it looks like there's a woman in terror, which is pretty much part of the course whenever I fart. Um, a man has pulled his, uh, yukata or kimono or whatever up. Uh-huh. Um, he's pulling he has, his cheeks Ace Ventura style. Yeah, he's doing an Ace Ventura thing, and he's farting directly into the mouth of a kappa, which is, of course, the correct methodology. <laughs> um, it looks like I am he's impressed. casting hyper beam. It does look like he's casting hyper beam with his fart. Yeah. Um, listen, I'm no stranger to farts. I get it. I get it. It's a yeah. good, it's, it is a, it is very funny. I enjoy farting. Um, I also find it very funny that in this image, a individual is just in pure terror. Yeah. <laughs> like, She's and I don't think they're afraid of the Kappa. I think they're afraid of the man who is farting. And like I like how there's there's one kappa trying to climb onto this like raft or whatever the heck it is. Yeah. And then there's another one that's like, no, 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 I'm done with this. <laughs> I'm gone. I think she's cowering from you because you have death farts. That's true. Although to be fair, to be fair, I didn't almost kill a car filled with two people with my fart. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> oh, I'm happy you no longer have that car, by the way, because the fart, that seat. Oh, it was ruined. Always ruined. It was, that car was ruined. <laughs> After that fart, it was never the same. <laughs> it was uh, a it was a nightmare fart, for sure. Oh, yeah. For those who are unaware, John was transporting an individual who farted and um the the car there was a pilot issue it caused it there was an issue that it it was just bad it was bad news <laughs> yeah i almost got into a car accident next to the uh what is it royal chicken it's the the kennedy fried chicken equivalent once you get go a little farther east oh i miss kennedy's i miss 
the uh, uh, the Jamaican beef patty in, with uh, cocoa bread. I do, I do too. And I don't sometimes know why I say in Miss Kennedy's because they are like, a, like you, if I cut, I don't live too far. <laughs> you could practically walk to a Kennedy's fried chicken where you live. Yeah, yeah. Like you could almost walk to a Kennedy's fried chicken, and the only thing saving you is your laziness. That's abs- that's a hundred percent true. It's a hundred percent true. <laughs> the show River Monsters had a full episode on the Kappa. River Monsters is an American and British TV show where biologist and extreme angler Jeremy Wade catches big ol' fish, a legend and folktale. There's a skeptical. It has a skeptical point of view, often looking for the real life analog that may have spawned these legends, stating that fish fact can be just as interesting as fish legend. Uh, so two things to that. One, I kind of disagree. Fish, fish, no. Fish legend is way cooler. Sometimes. Like, way cooler. Second, second, catches a big old fish of legend. Has he ever successfully caught a fish of legend? He's, he's captured fish that, like, I don't go in water. For a reason, and he does, and he's captured fish that are the reasons why I don't go in water that can just eat people, like the one that crawls up your urethra. I think they had an episode those? on that one too. Uh, Th- they definitely the had that. They 100% that's the worst. Had that. Yeah, I hate that. I yeah. hate everything about that. I'm not going to go into it because I don't remember what it was, but I just have a vague recollection yeah. of it, and it haunts my yeah. dreams. If I if my recall is accurate, I believe he did pee into a river um, because the rumors that it would go up your pee stream, so you don't even have to be submerged, but in reality, you do have to be like w- at least waste in the water. It's not just going to go zip right up your stream. That'd be a quick fish. It'd be a roll. There's some quick fish out there. That'd be a real quick fish, though. Yeah. I mean, archer fish are fast. River yeah, monsters. But they, yeah. Yeah, but they spit fast. They don't They don't swim fast. Have you ever tried to race a fish? You can't do it. No, because I have no sense. There's no reason to race a fish. <laughs> this isn't the fucking tortoise and the hare. <laughs> I'm not trying to prove myself to a fish. Mm-hmm. You know what I'll do to a fish? Walk. In this case, it would be the tortoise and the herring hate you thank you very much i hate you <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh. river monsters holds a special place in my heart as it is the first time i ever heard of the coelacanth a real life prehistoric fish thought to have gone extinct 66 million years ago in the cretaceous period existing only as legend and folklore until it was discovered to be thriving in 1938 off the coast of South Africa. It's an armored fish with lobed fins and is a real-life living fossil. It is the only remaining member of its taxon or taxonomic group of any rank, such as species, family, or class. It is also the coolest shit ever. It's also extremely ugly. They're so ugly, but they're so cool. Like, no joke, they're the coolest fish out there. That's fair. Next to maybe the, uh, like, a peacock uh, mantis shrimp. But that's a shrimp, not a fish. Yeah, I mean, yeah, a a mantis shrimp is a crustacean. So River Monsters is also special because I binge-watched all of it when it was on Netflix while building my unicorn Gundam kit from Gundam Planet. Shout out to Gundam Planet. God damn you. (laughs) You had to get that in. Oh, yeah. What did you and your... your, 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 advertisements for things that haven't paid us <laughs> it's gonna keep on keeping on <laughs> no i know you have you have tape you have preferences as you said yeah it was more a brag about my my kit than uh, a, a plug uh, it's a good kit i'm not it's gonna real i'm not kit. gonna i'm not gonna knock you on that it's a decent kit yeah it was good it was a lot of fun freedom gundam by the way being my least favorite build because of the the wings on it get very repetitive yeah that's fair i mean you had strike freedom though and that was yeah. just a cluster yeah the um the normal freedom is actually pretty decent because it doesn't it? have the weird it doesn't have the weird like expanding bit for the the, the yeah wings. they're like articulated it, bit on the wings and all yeah. of them have a bunch of pieces and it, it gets repetitive yeah it's it's more like i think like 
eight pieces per wing as opposed to like 30. Yeah. Also, <laughs> this has been Gundam Facts, a new sub podcast <laughs> on Cryptopedia. Woo! Welcome to Gundam Facts. I'm Brandon. How many of these are we going to get? I'm John. <laughs> um, and I don't have a Gundam in this room right now. I do have some mini claws, though. I find the lack of Gundam astounding in that room. Oh, wait. No, no. No, I do have a Gundam. I got oh, an RX-78 right on. 2 Gundam and cross silhouette frame set. I, I picked that up from Gundam Planet recently. Nice. Right on. Um, I also have a number of mini plot. Nice. Got some Titanus action going on here. I want like a crazy, crazy bear guy build, like one of the, like a really big one with like too many pieces to be justified. Like a perfect grade bear guy. Yeah. But it has like articulating bits on the inside and it like, it oh, houses yeah. sub bear guy units. And... <laughs> yeah, like I would uh, buy that in a heartbeat. What are we doing? What is the, what is this podcast become? <laughs> Who am and... <laughs> I anymore? So Jeremy starts his adventure by asking about legendary freshwater monsters at one of the world's largest fish markets. Here, he is pointed towards the Kappa and Hanshu Island and Lake Biwa. There. He meets Professor Kurida, an anthropologist from Shiga University, who says that as a child he is warned not to go swimming because the Kappa would come and take his spirit. As a child, two of his classmates drowned in a nearby river, and he was told it was the work of a Kappa. He describes it as I have earlier in the episode, but Jeremy adds something very interesting. He says that so, over... Yeah? So what you're telling me is two of his classmates couldn't swim. And they drown. Yeah, yeah. It's unfortunate, I mean, swimming, but yeah. Yeah, swimming in, like, anything other than a pool is incredibly dangerous, and people don't realize that. Yeah. Um, like, that one area near uh, near our high school, um, where there's, like, the underwater eddies that oh, just yeah. fucking destroy people, and no one yeah. knows where they are. Yeah. 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 Yeah, just never go in water. It's a good rule of thumb. That is actually a pretty decent good rule of thumb. Yeah. Avoid water. Yeah, shower and that's it. I can approve of that message. <clears throat> yep. So Jeremy adds something very interesting. And he says that over time, after attacks on the water, people often only see different parts of an animal. And over time, they see one bit, then another bit. And what you get is a sort of composite water monster in your head. Mm-mm. Yeah. Okay, yeah, that's fair. Yeah, no, that makes sense. He said it, and I went, oh, shit, that makes sense. That actually explains a lot of water monsters. Yeah, like a lot. Like of a them. lot. <laughs> yeah. He then travels to a shrine dedicated to the Kappa and speaks with a monk who points him towards the mummified remains of a Kappa. It is said to be over 400 years old, dating back to the Edo period. To me, it looks to resemble uh, parts of the remains of a small monkey, and it looks even more like a sideshow gaff, similar to the mummified fairy I made a while back with some help from the RPF, the Replica Prop Forum, which you can see on the Cryptopedia Instagram. Yeah, it's near when we did the fairy episode. Yeah. So sometime in October. Yeah. Uh, later, Jeremy himself says it looks to be a composite of several animals and that it was a not uncommon practice. One of the more common composite gaffs is the Fiji mermaid, part monkey, part fish. And these you could see around um, in a bunch of different, like, traveling carnivals. I think Barnum, yeah. uh, P.T. Barnum might have had one for a while. They were they were pretty popular at a certain point in time. However, he points out, given its description and the mummy, that if this is the type of people, or sorry, if this is the type of creature people think the kappa is, then perhaps he should not be looking for a fish after all. That doesn't surprise me at all. Why was he looking for a fish in the first place? It's not a fish, it's a reptile. Well, I mean, it's it's called river monsters. So... But it's a reptile. Yeah, that's true. He, it, it's it's clearly a reptile. It's it's a it's a a bipedal turtle. Are turtles reptiles? Uh, ah, I got are. you there. I got. Uh, they might be amphibian. No, they're not amphibious because. Yeah. 
Well, maybe they are. Are maybe. turtles amphibious? I don't know. What's a... Uh, what are turtles? Are turtles amphibious? Since they can live on land, and they also have an uh, expanded lung system. Reptiles include blah, 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 Um... They are. So there are 30 known seven species of amphibians and reptiles in Quebec. Something or other. There's a picture of a frog. I don't know. They're classified as aminotes. Wow, this is audio poison. Yeah. They, uh-oh. Uh, they are, they're, they're reptiles. They're reptiles. Okay. They are, in fact, reptiles. Because they don't have a mucus skin covering. Gotcha. Yep. They're... And they don't have a larval skin. So. There you go. They're... We should have probably looked that I... up before we, uh... Yeah. Said anything. I think they're mad. Is it because I, I falsely accused turtles of being amphibians again? No, oh, Mike, they might be mad about our honorary interns. Well, that's your fault. I'm not going to this. That's what? Oh, that's dangerous. I'm just but sitting okay. here. That's okay. I'll cover for you. No, you, it's just you. This is your fault. You made the honorary <laughs> I said, no, they're not going to like it. And what do you say? No, let's do it. Yeah, I said, Ian Glenn, great Scotsman. All right, go, go get, go get uh, yelled at. Come on down to Crazy Raiders Torture Museum and Emporium. We have all the most popular torture devices on display. The Judas Cradle, the Cat and Nine Tails, the Heretic's Fork, the Power and many more. We offer rentals by the hour. Only. Crazy Raiders and the owner Dennis are not liable for any injury caused while our devices are being used. All devices are functioning and accurately reproduced to the highest standard. So come on down, see the museum, and rent your torture device today. They uh, they they were pretty they were pretty mad. They accepted Ian Glenn as an intern. He's in charge of the fairy area. Uh, I, however, am put on the Yeti milking duty for the next quarter. Which Yetis? Glenn or Miranda? <laughs> Glenn. Yeah, I figured. Yeah, he's pretty mad at first, but then he's pretty relaxed after. Yeah, no, he he, he goes he he goes through his cycles for sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So at this point, since you since you were somewhat familiar with the Kappa, is there anything? That is sort of left out. Um, I guess there's some regional variations on the kappa, but uh, they're they're not classified as kappa anymore. They're kind of more like siblings to kappa. Gotcha. It's kind of it's kind of confusing. Um, I forget what they're called, but I, I read about a kappa tangent creature that, in some cases, they were interchangeable, in others, they were unique. Yeah, there's there's like one kappa that like skins people alive. I feel like. what? Yeah, it, there's there's a lot of very interesting regional things with kappa. So uh, that might have been another that might have been another yokai though. Okay. Ah oh, man. Nah, I can't come up with a good joke. <laughs> so from the monastery, he goes to Kyoto University to learn what river monsters uh, Japan may hold other than fish. It is there that Jeremy learns of a rare, nearly six-foot-long river creature called the Hanzaki. He travels to meet a Mr. Tashimoto, who has an institute dedicated to the Hanzaki's study. He is greeted with the bones of this creature, as well as a bunch of very graphic images of the bite marks it leaves. And I did not include pictures of those for a reason. I will say, River Monsters did, and the Hanzaki goes to the bone. Oh, that's fun. Yeah, yeah. Is it like a real monster? Oh, it's a real thing. It's a totally real thing. They travel to attempt Ooh. to crash... <laughs> oh, yeah. So they travel... Ooh. To attempt to capture the creature, which apparently lives in fresh water and spends a lot of its time under large stones. As the Hanzaki are protected as a species, he must travel with Mr. Tashimoto, otherwise he would not be allowed to go near them. With Kevlar gloves and a waterproof camera, he begins searching. He shortly finds one under a small rock and pulls it out. The Hanzaki is a giant river salamander. Yeah, I was about to say it looks a lot like a salamander. 
Um, oh, yeah. Also, it looks an awful lot like a, a 15-year-old Japanese schoolgirl in manga and a man with long hair. Wait, what? Th- those are the two hits that came up when I Googled Oh, it. when you Googled Hanzaki? I did, yeah. did uh, put... put Might the be a first... manga. The first time I wrote it, yeah, it had Hanzaki and then SP question mark because I, I have no idea how to spell it. Ooh, this is a good one. I don't know what this is, but it's good. <laughs> it's a boy with a, what? With a, a red weird nose. nose. Yeah. yeah, he's got a red nose. Yeah. Yeah, now, this, this episode has devolved into John browses Google Images and finds the most horrifying image he can. Oh, oh yeah. This, this is a good one. So the image to the left is a screen cap I took of River Monsters of him sort of wrangling what what's apparently oh god John 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 uh, it's about to get worse don't worry oh, oh no oh no yeah. oh no they noodle in there uh, he catches one with his bear John sending me images of what I would describe as a rabbit monstrosity and cat demon lady. Uh, so he, um, he he noodles one, yeah. He's noodling. Okay. Yeah. I kind of like how I'm noodling for upsetting images on uh, on Google Images, a little bit, <laughs> oh my, right? Oh no. I'm making oh. it worse. I'm I'm finding every terrible thing possible. Oh, this one's related to what we're talking about. <laughs> it's porn. <laughs> <laughs> You want to describe that to our listeners? Yeah, so I'm looking that at audio poison. an image which appears to be on an old, it's like a brown sheet of paper. On this paper, drawn uh, in ink, is what I would describe as a woman with her tatas exposed. Mm-hmm. She's sitting in front of a small stand mirror, wearing an orange kimono draped over her one arm. Holding her arm is a kappa... Um, that looks a lot like um who's his name is at the tip of my tongue Clint Howard he looks like like a super skinny bald man just sucking on her arm that's exactly what he's doing yeah it's kind of also... it's kind of wor- the worst make it even worse he's clearly a kept pet because he has a chain Connecting him to off something off screen. Oh no! Yeah, yeah. Oh no! I made it full screen. I just noticed that. Okay. So, our hodags will be very interested to know that I made that full screen, took a screenshot, and that will now be the last image in the document. Yeah. Because it's the worst. It's definitely the worst. It's the worst thing that. Oh god. Man, there's a lot of bad images in this. I feel yeah. like I've totally derailed the point of this episode. A little but... bit, but it's fine. Because um... I kept my place. After capture, it is measured, inspected, and chipped. So that as an endangered species, its growth may be tracked. The giant salamander in many ways matches the description of Kappa. It is the same size, the same color, and it has webbed human-like hands. Another so... thing... Yeah? So basically, it's just a large salamander. It's like a giant. It's a person. It's a human-sized salamander. That's true. That's nightmarish. Also, I would never noodle something that um that bites to the bone. Yeah, no. Jeremy is a badass. Like watching River Monsters, it's entertaining. Like a hair in the like Ghost Hunters way. But mm-hmm. not to that extreme. Okay. It's clear he already has all of the knowledge that he had. Like, he goes and visits experts, but it's clear he's already aware. And that they said, okay, you're going to talk to this guy. He says this to you. Go to-. But he goes in and he catches, like, these big old... Like, there's one where he, he catches piranha that eat testicles. But he's a real... He's a badass. And, like, giant catfish. Okay. Yeah. That That was it for me. The, the testicle eating piranha. piranha. Yeah. Yeah, I'm good fucked. on that. It's fucked. I'm, I'm good on that one. Yeah. Another theory is that the Kappa are based on Portuguese monks who began arriving in Japan in the 16th century. It's having the same hairstyle and the Portuguese word Kappa, which means 
the demeanor of a monk. So that that okay. I found was a very interesting tie into it. Another theory is that it's just a misidentified Chinese monkey. The final theory is similar to the theory of the changeling from our fairies episode. My personal opinion is that much like the kappa in the monastery, the legend of the kappa is a composite of all of these. That's that's probably the most likely thing. A lot of these things and creatures tend to follow that general yeah. vibe. Oh, yeah. As far as modern kappa go, there are festivals held each year where families play... Hang on, I forgot to make families plural. Boop, plural. There are festivals held each year where families pray for protection as well as offer cucumbers. Several monasteries tote kappa remains, not only the one from River Monsters, including one that has a signed document by a kappa. In popular culture, the kappa appears in Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban, as well as Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. It appears in many anime, Teenage Mutant Hero Turtles 3, where the turtles are mistaken for kappa, the captain from Animal Crossing, Final Fantasy, Harvest Moon, as well as many mascots across Japan. And, for those who don't know, Japan loves mascots. Like a lot. Like a lot, a lot. Many townships, cities, businesses, zoos, and stores, as well as restaurants, have their own mascots. And, as well as a kaiju flick called Death Kappa, as well as the Hellboy comic books. Um, so... Dear Lord. I really want to watch Death Kappa now. That's not from Death Kappa, the thing I just sent you. Yeah. But I, 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 oh man, I need to see this movie. So <laughs> this is an image from the movie. Mm -hmm. Um, one second. Do, 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 do. So, um, I'm just, I got distracted by that because for those of you who don't know, I might love kaiju movies a little bit too much. Oh, he loves kaiju a um, lot. A lot. A like, lot. It's kind of my go one of my go-tos for things I need to have on in the background if I'm trying to relax. Yeah. Um, so what I just said, Brandon, is a still frame from that movie. Uh, there is a large, I'd say roughly six-foot-tall Kappa standing in front of a woman in a Shrine Maiden outfit who is chained to a weird uh, cross-shaped cross... And there's a, a Japanese, the, the Japanese like war flag, the one that has all the like the star print, the star yeah. Um Also, there may or may not be like a nuclear launch device behind them. Yeah, I don't know, but it's just a <laughs> bunch of LEDs. So you know, that's how it goes. Yeah. That, and for those who don't know, between the two of us, mostly John, uh, but between the two of us, we we might have. Every Godzilla film on DVD, with the exception of one that two. I believe, with the exception of two, and I think those two might be only available on VHS and no longer made. I actually have both of them on VHS. Do you? Yes. Holy shit. Um, I have every Godzilla movie ever made. Oh, man. <laughs> Congratulations. I, I did not three. know that. I knew we I have... were pretty close. I knew you were way closer than I was. But holy cow! I have three copies of Godzilla vs King Kong alone. <laughs> I have it on VHS. I yep. have it on DVD, and yep. I have it on Blu-ray. Oh man, right on! I love Godzilla movies. They're just good. Good Times Home Video Corporation. Oh, this has an ISBN number. <laughs> so Kappa was also featured on the show Ancient Aliens, where, of course, they thought they Bullshit. were aliens. Yeah. Bullshit. Yeah. That's why they're Bullshit. not in my sources tab. Yeah. Bullshit. <laughs> I'm sorry. Just bullshit on that. Yeah. <laughs> like, you can't just say everything's an ancient alien. There's a clip that you can watch where it's about two or three minutes long. They hit just, like, the broad strokes of Kappa and then say... Were these possibly from outer space? And you're like, fuck off. Get out of here. What are you talking about? Were these from outer space? No. <laughs> no, they weren't. They absolutely weren't. No. No, they weren't. Kappa 
are not all bad. There are some who say that Kampa are knowledgeable in medicine and can set bones real good. Supposedly, they may also be befriend befriended and help you with small tasks. I'm assuming that that is what the woman in the orange kimono did in the picture you sent me. Yeah, she's he's helping her with the small task. Yeah. Uh, a, a small task. Um, arm sucking. Some arm sucking, yeah. We'll oh, see yeah. what it turns into, though. Oh, yeah. And that completely concludes my Kappa segment. However, we are not done yet. Because no? the following... Yeah, the following was suggested by listener Brandon Farrell. I was unable to get enough together to get a full episode out of it, but it is a very popular cryptid, so I thought it was definitely worth mentioning. And I this... also could not get a full episode out of this to save my life. Yeah. Oh, did you try? I, did you, did I you tried. Get... Yeah. I tried several times on this one. It's hard, man. The cryptid of uh, that we're talking about is the Fresno Nightcrawler, supposedly... In a video taken in the 1990s, the Fresno Nightcrawler, or Fresno Alien, is shown in surveillance footage. This video shows two tall creatures with no arms and incredibly long legs walking from out of frame to the other end of the frame of the camera. In 2011, in Yosemite Park, security was trying to catch some vandals. They also captured a pair of these creatures on video. The Fresno Nightcrawler, while having precious few settings and even less evidence, has become incredibly popular, with one Native American tribe recognizing them as bearing an incredible resemblance to their wood carvings, and I also have, but a do look at this, Fresno Nightcrawler Crypticon. Oh, uh, nice. Did you yeah. get that recently? Yeah, totally. Uh, awesome. That's like the t one of the two I don't own. <laughs> <laughs> Cryptons are great. They're great. Um, well, I won't go in depth on these, as that's all the information there is on the Fresno Nightcrawlers. There is, however, upon reviewing the videos, um, I'm pretty confident that I know exactly what these Nightcrawlers are. John, yeah. as you may know, when I was a youngster, around about fifth grade, my father and I started doing some pretty elaborate stuff for Halloween. And we took our trick-or-treater count from five... To over 200, we, mostly he, built fully automated, mechanized, <laughs> and, and PLM-controlled uh, guillotines, electric chairs, hangings, pendulums, headsmen, pneumatic dummies, coffins, pressurized blood machines, saw tables, and uh, just a bunch of other stuff. And eventually, the amount of work it took for storage and upkeep became too great, and it was sold to a haunted house or just a weird guy. I, uh... I don't quite remember. I think I helped run that haunted house thing. Like, oh yeah, what, totally. Two or three years. Cause yeah, I think I, think I was put like you in a cage. <laughs> I think you put me in a cage. That's yeah. that's probably the right place to put me. To be fair. <laughs> yeah, it was cool. I think you did pretty good on that shit too, right? Because it was a big old crate, and uh, you could see out of it, and you had a switch or a button inside, and you'd press it, and the front and the top would fly open, and then you could jump out and and spook some kids. There was pretty fun stuff that happened. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, as a side note, this is what got me started on design engineering. There are still sketches I made of the mechanized pendulum device that we had from when I was in fifth grade, which I'm pretty sure horrified my maths teacher. And combined with using the CAD software on my dad's computer at a very young age, I'm pretty sure there's no one else my age who could say they've been doing design for as long as I have. You know, Technically or, not, no. Yeah, at least doing, like, mechanical sketches and drawings for, like, 20 years. <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. And use it with that knowledge, after reviewing these videos, it's pretty evident that whoever made these used the same techniques that my father used to make our haunted house. The macro movements of these creatures in both videos, they move in a straight line, which says to me that they're being driven by something that's most easily described as a clothing line with a motor on one end and the dummy hanging from it. <laughs> you then control the walking speed with either a variac potentiometer or PDU PWM, depending on what kind of motor you attach to the line. And for the leg movements, the head of the creature contains a motor 
and as the motor rotates, it causes what the the two upper parts of the legs to swing back and forth. You mm-hmm. then adjust the speed of both the motor in the head and the motor controlling the forward movement of the creature until the uh, walking movement looks more natural with the swing of the legs. Watching the video, the knee joints bend both forwards and backwards, which means that there's no motor in the knees and that they're moving based on the contact of the feet with the ground and the moving of the upper portion of the legs. It's Hmm. pretty evident at this point, to me at least, that these videos are hoaxes, which you could replicate with two motors, some rope, and a bed sheet. And the slight bouncing motion and the tilt of these creatures only helps confirm this to me. Um, I still kind of think... There's a a part of me that thinks that someone might have also put on like a skirt or something or like one of those 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 leg pants that have two skirts <laughs> um and then they they just edited out the top half and they kind of like i did saw one of those things a youtube think... video a while back of a girl who had one of those like the long leg things but she pulled in her arms and put them in the legs and started doing like a funny dance and it made me chuckle but it, it reminded me of these i mean that's what it could be, too. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, these are all leg. It's all leg, and that's that's just about it. Well, also, the the other fact that the part that I left off. Um, yeah. They could have very easily done a very simple visual effect to cut it as well. They could have. Yeah. 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 Um, you just basically you record a plate, and then you record a second one, and you layer the two. And then you coat it. You cover where the person's upper torso was with yeah. a plate, and that's all you do. Um, I think Captain Disillusionment had an had a suggestion for that's how the hoax could have been run as well. Oh, okay, cool. Right I, I think I honestly think both of them are completely valid explanations yeah. for it. To be totally honest, the did you watch his uh, BlenderCon uh, no, video? Not yet. It's it looked so like it was like good. forty minutes. So it's I didn't forty minutes to watch it yet. It's so good. I tried to use Blender, but I'm used to, like, mechanical-type software, and it, yeah. it was... He goes into it. He's at a con- He shows up to the conference, and l- almost the entire 40 minutes is him ripping on how counterintuitive all of the tools within Blender are. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. Blender yeah. is a very counterintuitive tool. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And that, for me, is the end of... Of our Thanksgiving All-American special. This was the most Thanksgiving episode anyone could have ever asked for. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. If you're still in the Halloween mood, by the way, there is a film called Thanksgiving that you may enjoy. It's a Thanksgiving-themed horror film. And better yet, Thanksgiving 3. <laughs> because Thanksgiving 2 was so bad, they destroyed it. Supposedly. Oh, I, I, I don't know. That. Were you able to actually finish watching Thanks Killing Three? Ever? I never finished it. Thanks Killing One, I watched because Thanks... it's a good, bad slash tolerable fil- film. Thanks Killing Three was so far out there. Like I'm all for bad films, but holy cow! There was there was a a puppet romance with a human. Oh yeah, and Thanks Killing One, the turkey murders someone's father who happens to be the sheriff <laughs> skins his face wears his face as a mask and then has dinner with his daughter and she's fully fooled by this mask that's easily one of the best scenes from anything ever. <laughs> it's so good i, it's I so love good thanks killing one is a gem it, it's, it's gold it's a gorgeous movie thanks killing three is just turd yeah <laughs> like Thanks Killing 1, I think they were still trying to do something good. Yeah. And Thanks Killing 3, they just said, you know what? We'll just make something bad. Yeah. And whenever <laughs> someone sets out to make something bad, it's never good. No. Never. Because it doesn't have the heart. No. No. If you're interested in a little bit more about us and you want to find us in other locations and areas, you can check out our website at cryptopediacast.com. On Instagram and Twitter, we're at CryptopediaCast. We've got a SoundCloud that I'm not going to bother saying anything about. Uh, if you want to email us, you can email us at CryptopediaCast at gmail.com or us at CryptopediaCast.com. 
We've got a Patreon. There's a link on the website. If you click the money sign next to oh, Sasquatch's name. Nice. Uh, we have a Facebook group. You can just search Cryptopedia Cast on Facebook. If you want, rate and review. Leave us a leave us some feedback so we can, you know, get a little better at this whole thing. Uh, if you have any monster requests, feel free to send them in. Add us, anything like that. Creepy pasta or cryptid pasta, we're always yeah. willing to read some of. Sometimes it's a lot of work to find a cryptid, and we might need an off week. <laughs> <laughs> You can follow me on Instagram. I am at donkey underscore hands. My email is brandon at cryptopediacast.com. My website is boyerb.com. And my Twitter is at cryptobrandon. And if you want to follow me, you can follow me at mu2057 on Instagram or at jfdunham on Twitter. My website is still defunct because I'm lazy. If you want to email me, email me at john at cryptopediacast.com. Our artwork is done by Tom Hill. You can find him on Instagram at Thomas Michael Hill. His website is greatergloryco.com and his email is tommikehill at gmail.com. All right, I'm John. I'm Brandon. And things are going to get weird. <laughs> so, <clears throat> if you scroll down a little bit, you'll see in all caps I wrote, Oh God. Oh God! So okay. if you just Google oh God. Kappa, I'm going to try as hell. Kappa fart in my mouth. If you Google Kappa, this is what you get. Kappa dot fart in my mouth. Kappa. Kappa. Kappa dot fart in my mouth. Kappa dot fart in my mouth. Oh right. <laughs> oh, and the next thing is the click fart scene.